Welcome to the demo of Prime Infrastructure Cisco DNA Center Coexistence Tool. My name is Lila Rousseau. I'm a technical solutions architect for enterprise networks and I'm based out of Toronto in Canada. Let's start by taking a look at Cisco DNA Center network hierarchy. And the way we are doing this demo is that I'm using DNA Center in my lab and for that reason, we have the network hierarchy for Canada. And we will be exporting data from a prime infrastructure that has a network hierarchy for Asia Pacific. So completely separate network hierarchies, completely separate devices and maps, uh, so that it's very, very easy to identify the migrated data. So we can see that we don't have anything related to Asia Pacific. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going into my prime infrastructure to show the network hierarchy and the devices that we have. In this case, as, as mentioned before, we have our Asia Pacific network hierarchy with a site called Singapore building one. And then within that building, I have three floors. Let's explore the three floors. In floor number one, I have a router. We call it router one. I have a WLC and there's also an access point. It doesn't show here because it's attached to the WLC, but the access point is going to be migrated as well. And then in floor two, we have another router. That is router two. And we are going to see that in floor three, we don't have any devices. It's an empty floor. And that is the data, including the maps, that is going to be migrated to DNA Center. So for this, I'm going to launch the DNA Center coexistence tool. As we can see, this tool lives in prime infrastructure. This is where the workflow will start. And the first step would be to enter the information, meaning the IP address and the credentials for DNA Center. Uh, once, we, once we enter that information, we can see that the um, two controllers are reachable and this is something that we want. The next step is to configure the synchronization settings. First option or first decision is CMX. If we do have CMX deployed, we have two options. We can continue having CMX integrated with Prime, or we want to move the integration from Prime to DNA Center. If we decide to do the latter, we would select the CMX settings. This will enable step number four, and this is where we would enter the CMX credentials. If we want to leave the integration with Prime, then we can uncheck this box and the CMX would would not move to DNA Center. Just keep in mind that CMX can be integrated with either Prime or DNA Center, but not with both. Now, in my example or in my lab, I don't have CMX. So for that reason, I'm going to uncheck the box. Now, the other areas that we need, or the other two things that we need to decide what to do is if we want to do a one-time synchronization or if I want to if I want to trigger synchronization every, every time a change is done in prime infrastructure. If you are going to do a one-time migration from prime to DNA center and you want to use this tool for that purpose, you might want to uncheck these boxes because you want to do it one time and then you will do everything from DNA Center. If you want to maintain Prime Infrastructure as your main controller and every time you make a change in data that has been synchronized with DNA Center, you want to update DNA Center with that data, we are going to check this box. And the second box is to also allow Prime Infrastructure to automatically push data into DNA Center that has been newly created. So you can hover in these question marks to get more information on these two options. 
The third step is to select the groups, and the groups are in prime infrastructure. They are similar to the net network hierarchy in DNA Center. And we have the option of selecting all the groups or some of the groups, so this granularity gives you a lot of control. In our example, we decided to synchronize the Asia-Pacific site and all the sites, buildings, and floors within but we are not going to migrate or do coexistence with the site called USA. Now, once we mark the groups, we can also see the impact in DNA Center um, with those new groups. So what we see here is that in DNA Center, we have a site that is Canada. We saw that it existed before, that there has nothing to do with this coexistence, but then we do see that these new sites, buildings, and floors are going to be new in DNA Center. The last part would be a summary. With a, the summary gives you very good information on what groups, devices, maps are going to be created in DNA Center, and with that, uh, we would use the tab called Add, or we also have the Update or Delete, that shows us information that needs to be updated or deleted. This particular demo is showing the first time synchronization. For that reason, we are going to see all the information in the Add tab only because we are adding all this information. Once we, can, once we finish taking a look at all the tabs, we are going to go in and select the Force Sync button. And <clears throat> and here's where we have indication on how the migration is going. This is fast forwarding a little bit um, to make it more interesting for the demo. But once this is done, I'm going to go in into DNA Center and take a look at the network hierarchy. So I'm going to refresh the page in DNA Center and we are going to see that now the Asia Pacific site together with all the buildings and floors within are populated in DNA Center. And not only that, in floor number one, we also have the map as well as the access point located in the map. All this information comes from Prime. Uh, we saw before that I have a wireless LAN controller and one access point, and the access point is reflected here and both the access points and the wireless LAN controllers are located in floor one. Now, I will also want to show floor two and floor three, and we are going to see that in these cases, we don't have maps in DNA Center because I don't have maps in prime infrastructure. So really we see the same state in prime as in DNA Center because all that information have been pushed from one controller to the other. Now, what I've just did is I went to the inventory. So we are here in the inventory. We see that in floor three, we don't have any devices. Same as in prime. In floor number two, we have router two. And in floor number one, we have router one, wireless LAN controller, and access point. For router number one, I'm go I clicked on the device, and we are going to see exactly the same information as if we had discovered the device using the discovery tool, for example. I can even go ahead and use the command runner to run commands, same again as uh, any other device in DNA Center. The last quick thing, I want to show also the same information for the wireless LAN controller, as well as the access point. From the access point perspective, we are going to see that it's clearly associated with the right wireless LAN controller located in floor one. And with that, we conclude the demo of DNA Center coexistence tool within prime infrastructure.